Alrighty then, it's a Thursday. We're heading towards the weekend. It's my Friday, because I, I work Sundays, which is great. A um, lot going on. We've got uh, a beautiful day around here. Red flag warnings have been dropped. Wind advisory has been dropped. Air quality is great. Temperatures this weekend will cool down. Some clouds come in. And then maybe some a little bit of rain or something on Monday. We'll see. But then after that, it looks like the door opens a little. I'll show you that in the computer model. And then we've got uh, this fire in, in Southern California on Oxnard. And uh, we'll look at that. A lot of smoke from that coming off. And still a red flag warning down there. And still very dangerous fire conditions. The fire almost doubled in size um, overnight. So it's up around 18,000. The acreage just keeps growing because it's being funneled right out to the ocean. We'll look at that. Okay, is it a lynx or is it a bobcat? Right? I, I struggle with this because a big bobcat often looks like a lynx. Here's a, the, the way it works out. We've got a lot of bobcats, and we even have lynxes here too. M much, many more bobcats, um, both uh, indigenous to Northern California or to North America. Bobcats are more numerous. They're more aggressive, even though they're smaller. They have little feet. Their feet are small. So when you feed them little cat prints out when you're hiking, if it's small, that's typically going to be a bobcat. If it's a little bigger, it's going to be a lynx. And if it's much bigger, it's obviously a mountain lion. Mountain lion uh, paw prints are hard to miss. Um, what else do I know about them? I don't. I learned a little bit about them. Their feet are small, the bobcats, and their legs are shorter. That's how you tell them apart. The bobcat, shorter ear tufts. Hmm. And supposedly black at the end, but it looks like that lynx has black at the end of his ear tufts as well. They're separate species. The lynx can get up to 45, 50 pounds, and a bobcat somewhere around 25 or 30 pounds. Yeah, and they're all over the Bay Area. There's a bunch of them. So these pictures were taken, this was Point Reyes a few months back, and it's they're nocturnal. I'm not used to seeing them during the day, but I have. I've seen a lot of bobcats. Just Marin County's loaded with them. Um, mountain biking for over 35, 40 years now, you just see them. And especially in the morning, I see them a lot in the mornings. Um, bobcats, that is. I've only seen, I think I've only seen one or two lynxes in all my years. But these pictures taken, and this was an unusual sighting. I thought typically if you see something during the day, they're not doing real well, like a nocturnal animal. Uh, even coyotes, you don't want to see them during the day. That means they're not doing too well. But um, this bobcat looks pretty healthy. Okay, so let's move on. We'll move forward. We've got a lot to talk about. This I pulled up this morning. This is um, Siberia, which is a top of... of um, I always almost call it the wrong name, right? Because it was Squaw Valley for a thousand years. It's Palisades, which is Olympic Valley, which is, this is the, the ski run. This is at the top of the ski run known as Siberia. And just the sun coming up and just a beautiful day out there. Still some snow on the peaks, which is awesome. And just a beautiful day. Let's see what we got here. We've got uh, the winds now. This is down in Southern California. This is the surface observation map, right? So we're kind of down here. Here's Carpinteria. Here's Ventura. Here is a natural funnel, if you will. And this is one of the reasons that the fire is so bad. It's right in this area. And if you can see, I think you can see the topography. These are mountains and hills. And then this is, well, you see the creek, right? It's flowing out to the ocean. So it's low lying. It's a canyon or a ravine, if you will, very narrow at times, and the winds have been accelerating. And so the fire has grown rapidly because, well, and this is like mini Coffee Park. Um, if you know Fountain Grove in that area, they have the, the, the road faces the same way. It's a little, not as pronounced as this, but anytime you're funneling, you get a north northeast wind. I mentioned this the other day. Most of the winds, or most of the canyons, and areas of topography, the valleys, run kind of east to west or more northeast to southwest. And that's because everything's draining off the hills and coming in our, in our world is coming out to the ocean. So especially off the Sierra Nevada. So you can see that, that, that when you get a north wind like this, there's a lot of opportunities for funneling. You have more opportunity for funneling over here, right? And you can kind of see it, a 31 mile an hour gust out by Palmdale in this area. This is topography driven fire. So what's happening is that fire is, is being accelerated. The winds may be gusting to 25, 30, but down where the funnel gets pinched, 
they could be going 40, 50, 60, 70 miles an hour. So here's the smoke coming off the fire. And look how far it's drifted north. It's almost, we've almost got smoke into Monterey Bay from this fire, which is hundreds of miles to the south. They're going to get a break, but it's a ways off. So let me clock this out. I turned it over. This is um, the fire zone. I'm punching the current statistic, almost 20,000 acres on this fire. This is Ventura. And again, you can see the, the drainage and that's exactly where the fire wants to go. So what the firefighters are doing, they're on the ridge lines, putting um, fire retardant down to keep it from coming up over the top. But the, the flow of this fire wants to go right towards the ocean, right out towards Ventura. So this one, this one bears watching, most certainly. It's a, it's a big fire and it is um, dangerous. So as they all are, this is a shot of it. I don't know how what this is. This is um, kind of, I'm not sure exactly. You can see where the, there it is. You see that smoke plume being blown offshore. Very dramatic, but you see the topography. Look at the hills. So, and you can see how pronounced that mountain is. On the other side of that mountain is yet another canyon. Let's take one more peek here, see if we can get a better shot of it. I don't know if I can. No, I can't. Okay, so with that in mind, we come back to our weather, which is... Yeah, I wouldn't say benign, but it's compared to what those guys are going through, right? So this is um, the last 24 hours, sun sets, lights come on, airplanes go offshore. I love this. Um, these cameras, this UC San Diego Alert California, all these live cameras, and you can run time lapse on all of them. So this is today. And you see, you could probably see the winds kind of blowing offshore a little bit. Okay, so what I want to show you now, I'm going to back this up. I know. Sorry about that. This is the sea level pressure GFS and there's the winds, right? You can see the isobars packed and you can see isobars packed down in Southern California as well. Not horrible, but it's getting better down there. But as I go forward the next few hours, see how they open up those, those isobars, the railroad tracks, the corduroy, whatever you want opens up. See, there's some wind here and there's a little bit of wind here, but you see how far apart that line is from that line. So that basically is a, a, a very light pressure gradient. What we're going to look at now is not winds. We're going to look at the chances of some shower activity. You see that offshore? Not much. And then somewhere around Monday, this system shows up. And it looks like it's got an opportunity to bring us some scattered showers, but it kind of falls apart. But then as I look, feel like you, it looks like the doors open for more, you see everything kind of tweaking through and then you get this towards the end of next week. So it, it, it's encouraging, obviously, to, to see um, the opportunity for more rainfall. So let's keep our, our fingers crossed on that. Ocean Beach, tide's dropping out. Surf's going to be good today. Um, what can I tell you? Oh, swell's dropped a bunch. Uh, it will come up next week, and that's a sign of a healthy, very healthy um, storm center system up around the Aleutians. So the swell earlier this week, we got up to 10 to 12 feet. That's pretty good size for before Thanksgiving. And then this next week, the middle of next week, I mean, we could see swells up to 15, 10 to 15 foot again, which will just start to nudge Mavericks over the edge, which it takes a big swell for that wave to break because it's a deep water reef. Okay, this is Santa Cruz. Wonderful place. Great climate. You know, Santa Cruz has got one of the best climates in, um, I think, in California. San Clemente is supposedly has the perfect climate because I think the average between their winter and summer temperature, I think their average temperature year round is like 67, winter and summer, their average temperature. Santa Cruz, not that way, but in terms of sunshine, and a lot of it has to do with the way the Monterey Bay faces, faces south. So the Northwest winds in the summer months, which can be gloomy, as you know, in many parts of the, the North and Central coast, the fog gets blown offshore. It may be there in the morning, but the winds blow it offshore. So, links or Bobcat? There we go, back to where we started. Okay, five-day forecast coming up. Um, we'll take a look at that. It looks pretty straightforward. Have a great weekend. Weather looks good. Fire danger way, way down. It's still high because it's not rained a bunch yet, but maybe next week. I'll see you back here.